So now we have our Spring Boot web app ready with the database as well, which is Postgres. And what we are able to do till now is we are able to run the project. Uh, I mean, of course, we have written the code so that we can get some output on the screen. And then the data is coming from database. In fact, we have also created this data to SQL so that we can get some initial values. And then uh, if I go back here to see the output, you can say this is the output we have. And of course, things got added two times is because we are running this multiple times and every time we run this, it will load that data to SQL and it will fill up the data. But in the real world, we don't do that, right? We have, when you start a project, you will have some dummy data, which you will insert in database, not from the code. And then as you keep your web, web application live, people are going to join, they're going to register themselves and that's how it works. But here we're just using some initial file and that's what is getting loaded. Anyway, that's not the main concern. The main concern is we have our app ready and now we want to create, we want to dockerize it. Basically, I want to run this on a container. We have seen this before, right? We were able to run a hello world and we were able to run that on a container. But this time things are different is because we have our application plus we also have a database and I want to run my database on a separate container, okay? Now that will be tricky, right? So just be with me and see what I'm doing. The first thing is I want to dockerize my application first. Now the way you can do that is we have seen that we have to use a Docker file. Now how do we create that? So what I will do is I will just use the Docker file which we had used earlier. And I think I do have a project open here, REST demo. So let's use this particular Docker file, if you can see here. And I can just copy this because we know how to do it now. Okay, where is my IDE? I want to paste that in this project. So I'll go back to my homepage, paste, and I want my Docker file to be here. Okay, Docker file is here. The changes, the changes is we don't want to name it as REST demo now. It should be something different, something for this project. Now this is your student app, so I want the same name. And if you want a shorter name, not the bigger name where you have uh, a snapshot or something like that, because see, if you don't mention the name for it, by default it will pick up the name which is which you have mentioned here, which is artifact student app, and then this version is so big. So one thing you can do is you can just go back here in the build, you can mention the final name, and you can mention this is as a student app, so that the jar file which you'll get is student app and that should be in target folder. So if you look at target, it's empty at this point. I mean, it's not empty, but we don't have a jar file yet. Okay, so the first thing is I want to get the jar file. How will you do that? Uh, first, whenever you make changes in your POM file, you have to make sure that you load your Maven changes. If you're using IntelliJ, you will get this option here. If you are using some other software, let's say in, uh, Eclipse, you can right click on your project and you will see an option of Maven and then you just refresh. Okay, so now if I uh, want to create a jar file, I have to run a command which is uh, mvn clean package. So I can just go back here, execute a maven goal, and I want to run mvn clean package. This is what I want to run. So when I click this, it will first of all clean the target folder and then it will start creating new things. So as you can see, we got a lot of things, but we got the jar file. This is what we wanted, right? Now, once you got the jar file, you can run that on a container. So we can do that. We have done that before as well. But this time, I want to use something else because we want to run two containers. And when you want to run two containers or more than, more than that, it's a bit tricky. So one of the solutions we can use here is Docker Compose. Now, Docker Compose is basically a tool which is there. It's a part of Docker Desktop, which you can use to work with multiple containers. How we are going to use that? Do we have to install something else? Not exactly. And the beauty is you can run multiple containers or you can stop multiple containers just with one command. That's what we want, right? We don't want to run multiple commands, okay? We just want to run, want to run one command which should do everything. And to achieve that, we have to use Docker Compose. So what we can do is we can just go back to terminal and we can say Docker Compose up. That's it, this is the command you have to use. And if you want to build your project, because see, we have not built the Docker image yet for the project. So what you can do is you can use a double hyphen and you can say build. But the moment you do that, it will give you error. It says no configuration file provided, not found. Okay, basically Docker co compose up will work provided you give a configuration. You have to mention, right, what containers you want. It's not magician to know everything. So it is magic, but then we have to provide some configuration. And the way you can do that is by creating a file called docker-compose. So the file name is docker-compose.
compose.yml. Now this is a YML configuration which is much better to work with compared to properties is because when you have property files and if you want to mention URL, username, password for the same parent, you can see the parent is same, spring.datasource, spring.datasource, spring.datasource. In fact, in YML, it helps you to reduce the number of lines. So basically, if you want to do this in YML, this is not a YML file, but if, I, if you want to do that, you can simply say spring colon, and you can mention data source only once, and then you can have a child elements to it. You can say, this is the suggestion which we got. You can see, you can mention the URL, username and password, just like this, instead of these three lines. So you can see the number of words which we use become less because now we know that URL is a part of data source. Username is a part of data source. That's how you do configuration for your YML. In fact, you can convert your this application properties to YML. That also works. A lot of people prefer YML. Uh, but let's do it for the Docker Compose here. Now, what are the things you have to mention? The first thing, you have to mention the version number. The version we can mention is the current version, which, which I last worked with is 3.7. You can also try 3.8. It might work. Uh, so I think the new one is 3.8. When you're watching this, after some time you're watching, uh, you might be getting a different version. Next, you can see I got all the suggestions here. And... Uh, AI tool work. So let's type it. So for this project, what are the things you need? So you need two things, right? You want to run your application plus you want to run the database. And all these are part of basically a service. So I can say services and then what you want to do. So first I want to build a app, not a web. Let's say I want to, okay, so we got everything. Um, I will just remove this. So this is the AI suggested stuff, let's type it. <laughs> so I will say this is app, I want an app. And in this app, what we want to do? So the first thing we want to do is, we want to build an image for the project. Now the image is generated with the help of Docker file. So this is a file who is responsible to do that. Okay, we forgot to make changes here. So this should be student app.jar. And I can mention the same thing here, student app.jar. And when I want to run this, it should be student app.jar, okay. Go back to the uh, YML, and here we have to mention, first thing I'm gonna do is I want to build it, right? So that's the build. And what should be the command? So we can mention the command as well, but let's do that later. And also, remember when we were running the uh, application, we have to also expose the port. So we can do that with the help of ports here. And I want to expose, let's say, uh, not 5000, but I want to expose 8080 or 8090, remember that's what we were doing. 8090 to the container port number 28080. Let's say, use, let's use that in container. So this is the host port number and this is the container port number. Okay, so these are the two things you have to mention in the app. Next, let's focus on the Postgres. So we want Postgres as well. So we'll say we can mention Postgres here. So we want to run two containers, right? One is app and one is Postgres. The first thing you have to mention is the image itself. So I will just use image colon. I want to use Postgres but then I want to use the latest version, not the version which is mentioned there. I'm not sure what's the latest version, but it should work. Next, you have to mention the environment variables. See, whenever you connect with any database, you have to provide some things. For right? example, if you go back to the application properties, these are the properties we have mentioned for Postgres. This is the URL, uh, that's your username, that's your password, but I don't want to use this username password for my container. Because see, this set, these settings are there for my Postgres which is installed in this machine, not on the container. But if I want to run a container, I want to use different username, different password, and uh, different database maybe. So I will mention all those things here. So I can say environment. And the first thing I want to mention is I don't want user to be Postgres, I want user to be Naveen. I want the password to be 1234. And database is, let's say, let's go with Telisco. Next, we have to mention the port numbers as well. As you know, in the application properties, we have also mentioned the port number. But the problem is, uh, this port number is busy for my one server. I don't want to use the same port number. So for the con for, for Postgres, which is installed in this machine, I can use some other port numbers, let's say 5431, for that matter. So I can say ports, and I will expose 543, let's say 33. And for the container, I want to go with 5432. I just want to use a different port number than the port number there in the system, and that's it. So what we have done is we are mentioning that we want two containers, not one. We want app, which will run in one container. We want Postgres, which will run on another container, okay? So will this work? That's, a, so that's something we have to explore. Let's see, let's try and see if that works. 
you know, that's how you learn, right? That's how you know something will happen. Since we have changed our, did you make any changes? No. Okay. So we can directly run. Uh, we can directly run this images. So I can say Docker compose up build. Let's see what happens. So this time it is not giving error by saying not found. It found the container. It it is also creating the container. That's great. Okay. Let me just check the Docker images. Okay. So I was doing some experiment before. Yesterday I was doing some experiment. And you can see this is what I'm talking about. So this is eight seconds ago. And we got student app app. That's the uh, image which we got. And also, okay, it is giving error is because, okay, so if, if you can see, we got an error. It says the project is already running. Oh, that's right. We should have stopped it before doing this. Let's do that once again. It's because uh, we forgot to stop the uh, running uh, process. So you can see when I do that build again, we got some weird errors and there are a lot of errors. And we love errors, right? So if you can see, the error is because it's not able to launch uh, properly. Okay, now this is the problem. This is, okay, before this also we have problem. Let's try to understand that first. Let's go to the topmost position from where we're getting this problem. You know, debugging is a skill which you have to learn first then do all those things. Okay, so you can see it says the connection refused. Now this is a problem. The problem is, see when you talk about Docker and uh, when you say you want to connect to a particular network and as we mentioned before, Docker itself will have its own network. Docker will have itself its own uh, uh, storage, right? We have seen that. We have Docker networks, Docker storage in the architecture. So they will have their own network. So basically we want to make sure that you're able to connect your network, which is in the computer, which is the outside network with the Docker, Docker network. So somewhere we have to create that connection. Plus we have two containers and they are running in their own networks. So every container will have their own network. How they will communicate? And that's, the, that's where the problem starts. How do we solve this problem? We have to make some changes. And what changes? We'll see that in the next video. So in this video, we have talked about how to create a Docker file, how to create Docker Compose YAML, uh, YAML file, and the required configuration. Again, this is not complete. We want to make it work, and as I mentioned before, things are a bit complicated in terms of configuration. But again, you do this only once, right, for the entire project. So yeah, see, what are the configuration we have? Let's see that in the next video.